go out of the uh, actual. Go out of the. Uh... Well, hi everyone, and welcome to Pushing the Limits. Well, hi everybody, and welcome to Pushing the Limits. Super excited to have you with me here again today. I have a repeat offender on the show, Dr. Cam McDonald, who's coming on for how many times is this? On number three, I think, Dr. Cam. I think, yeah, it is number three. Yeah, we've done a combo, we've done uh, a solo, and now another solo. What a treat. <laughs> yeah, and we, we're running this live on YouTube as well as this, uh, doing it for a podcast. So if you're watching us via the video, welcome along. And if you're doing it via the podcast, it's fantastic to have you with us. Today, we're going to be talking about resilience, stress, and immunity and how to personalize your protocols and your lifestyle interventions for your particular genetic type to increase your resilience and immunity. So Dr. Cam, where should we start with this big topic? It's a big, it's something that everyone's talking about at the moment is immunity and you know lowering stress levels because yeah. when we're stressed, when we're you know got lots of stress hormones running through us all the time, which I think you and I probably both do to a certain degree with our jobs and uh, lifestyle and our genetics, um, how do we manage that on a day-to-day -day basis and how do we personalize that and understand it in regards to our own sort of body makeup and our health types? That's a great opening question, Lisa. That is <laughs> as broad as you like. So it's probably, I reckon that the best way that we would start with this is, um, is just by defining these things like stress and, and, and resilience and even immunity. So uh, I guess stress... Uh, can be defined as anything that um, takes our body away from homeostasis. So we're, we're calm, we're, we're cool, we're collected, we're lying in bed. Waking up and putting your feet on the floor actually creates a stress on our vascular system. You know, our, our yep. blood has to start moving harder because it's now moving against gravity. That creates a little bit of a stress. That's taken us away from that resting state. And so if you prolong that or put the wrong kind of stress on somebody, um, then it creates damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, the really cool thing about the stress cycle is that if you recover, then that your body learns. So it goes, all oh, right, I got damaged here and I'm now going to learn about that. And in my recovery, I'm going to get stronger so that that same stress when I get exposed to it again, doesn't affect me as much. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so, and I guess some examples of stress might be, you know, exercise is a stress. We don't think about it that way. We think, oh, what's positive exercise is positive. Yeah. Yep. But exercise is actually a stress. It makes us um, feel, uh, it actually puts a demand on our body. And you, yep. you'll know running your ultra marathons that your body is not in its best health at the 90 kilometer mark. <laughs> no, definitely um, not. It, is, it is at its best health probably before the race starts. And then your body is exposed to a prolonged period of stress. But then you do that, your body then rests and recovers and you get stronger so that you can get up and do it again. Yep. But then there's other stresses, you know, like our workload and being underslept and uh, <clears throat> eating the wrong food, um, and being in relationships that create stress, all of these things put a demand on our body and our mind. Yep. Uh, and this tells the body that there's some sort of emergency. And so in that emergency, we have to take action, we have to cope, which we can expand on. And then we have, then we have, then we get very tired and we get exhausted. Um, and then that's when we need to recover. Yep. So for me, a stress is really anything that takes us away from that rested state yep uh if it's short and the right kind of thing and then we recover we get stronger if it's prolonged and there's no recovery then it can help us deteriorate and lead to very poor health and lowers our immune system as well um and then when it comes to resilience resilience is about being exposed to stress but being able to handle it yeah and so uh <clears throat> when it's it's different to recovery in that you know you're getting stronger resilience is in you are in the stress and generally, if you have, I like to think of resilience as having resilience juice. You've got a certain amount um, based on your capacity to tolerate stress. And so, um, you know, the training that you've put in, the mindset that you have gives you more juice. So then at any given stress, you can tolerate it better and push forward. And, and I would have to say that resilience or oh, stress is essential. And so we have to have stress to grow. Therefore, we must have resilience to be able to tolerate that stress so that we can continue growing. If we run out of resilience, we don't want to expose ourselves to stress ever. 
but this doesn't allow us to grow then. So um, this is where I see those two things interplaying. And then the immune system is one of those things that's, um, you can have an underactive immune system that isn't mounting a good response, or you can have an overreactive immune system, which is actually then attacking your own body, autoimmune conditions. Um, and so we're really looking, when we're look, talking about immune health, we're talking about that sweet spot right in the middle where we're aggressively fighting things from the outside, but protecting our own tissues and organs at the same time. So I reckon that's a place to start. We can go from there. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> you just done, you did that so well. So I think, so stress, resilience and immunity are all interlinked and we need a certain amount of stress. And we talk about like hermetic stresses and how good they are for our bodies because they cause a cascade of events. When I hop into the sauna, it's you know hot and I'm sweating and that's causing response in the body. I don't want to be in there for three hours though, because that's going to kill me probably. But a small, short, you know, sharp shock can often be helpful in creating a hermetic stress. So what we're trying to do is avoid the chronic stresses, <clears throat> the sort of stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, that builds up over time and then the stuff that's going to be negative. Uh, for our mindset and our and our ability to cope. So when we have a stress response, Dr. Kim, what actually happens in the body? So I don't know, someone cuts you off in traffic or you get a nasty email from your boss or something like that, or you have a fight with your spouse or what's actually going on on a physiological level? Yeah, awesome. So <clears throat> um, uh, there's a really beautiful model uh, that talks about the stages of stress uh, uh, designed by Han Sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has stood the test of time and is definitely the way that we need to understand stress. So we have our, it's a four stage model with the, the first stage being homeostasis. When you're just chilling out, like you're sitting in the car, there's no real stress. You're just driving along. Um, what happens when you get cut off or the boss yells at you or, um, or says, I want to see you in, actually probably the boss saying, I want to see you in my office in, yeah. uh, in 10 minutes, yeah, in an hour, even better. Yeah. And so, what happens in that first stage of stress is you become neurally alert, alarm stage, it's called. Essentially, all of your senses will become more alert to say, what's going on here? Uh, and what, do, what kind of information do I need to pick up from the environment to make sure that I'm going to be okay? So you go to alarm phase. It's like, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> and so that's where we get anxious this which is a uh, worry about the future it's like what could possibly be coming in our future and so that alarm stage and another way to think about it is you're standing on the start of a uh, 800 meter race you know so you've got that um that nervous energy the really gun hasn't gone off yet it's yep. all in your brain okay yep. so that's alarm stage one alarms uh, so and then we go into resistance stage two resistance stage is where we are now in the fight we're now in the boss's office defending ourselves or we are <laughs> 500, 500 meters through the race where our body, it's now no longer a matter of I've got to be alert to the environment, but rather I've now got to get in and fight and I've got to cope. And so uh, this coping thing is something that we're doing all of the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and the, the great example obviously would be, you know, for, for yourself in a, in a long distance run, your body has to cope with all of the stress of continuing when your body wants to stop. And genuinely it says, I, I want to stop. This stress is, is, is not fun. Yep. I want to stop, please. <laughs> the same thing goes for um, your, you've had a bad night's sleep for five nights in a row and now you've got a front up at work yep. and you have to cope with the tiredness. And so that coping is resistance stage two. What your body does to cope in stage one, our nervous system becomes aware. In stage two, our blood pressure goes up. Oh. Our blood sugar levels go up. Oh, our uh, blood fats go up. Oh. Our um, Everything that's going to support energy release in the body and making sure that we can maintain a very high level of energy, they are going to be the systems that go up. And so, you know, because when you're 500 meters to a race, your blood pressure, if it drops, you won't have enough blood to pump around your body. So <laughs> in order to cope, it has to keep your blood pressure up. If you're tired and underslept, your body, in order to cope with the workload, it needs to have a blood pressure that's going to allow you to stay awake. You need to have blood sugars that give you fuel. You need yep. to have blood fats that give you fuel. Yep. And so in stress, your body breaks down muscle it's and it 
it turns that into carbohydrates for your brain and it breaks down fat tissue and turns it into fats for your body. Your blood pressure goes up. And so now we have this essentially, if you have a, a 500 meter race, it would look like a hundred meter race. It would look like you have sort of diabetes and high blood pressure. If you were to take a snapshot of that race. And I've done that in the middle of things and yep. the, like uh, at the end of interval training sessions. And I took, I remember taking my blood sugar. I'd been fasting for 18 hours, did an interval yep. training session, took my blood sugars and it was at 9.5 and I had a heart attack. And I went like, what the hell? Exactly. Hopefully you didn't have a heart attack, but you no, were definitely but I, looking like a profile. Hunter that was, yeah. Your profile would have. So this is what's so important is that that exercise, that under sleep, it makes your body cope and blood pressure isn't bad. Blood pressure is keeping you awake. High blood sugars aren't bad. They are providing fuel for your brain. Blood fats aren't bad. High triglycerides aren't bad. They are keeping your body fueled. And so we see these things as bad things, but in fact, they are our coping mechanisms. Without them, we wouldn't be able to get through the day. Right. In the short term. In the short term. And this is the problem is that you'll then persist with this. But before we get there, what happens in your resistance phase, it essentially assumes that you are being chased by something very urgently you need to get away from, like a saber-toothed tiger, essentially. Yeah. And so your immune system goes, well, I don't have the energy to, to like tackle these bacteria, to mess with this virus, to I just need to make sure that I can supply as much fuel out to my bones and my muscles and my as I can so that we can get out of here. And then I'll worry about my bacterial infections later. Yeah. And so while we're in this coping phase, your immune system gets suppressed. It goes yep. down. Um, and this is why, you know, in some autoimmune conditions, they actually use very strong uh, immune suppressants to yep. reduce the immune system because yep. it's the immune system in stress depresses and so in coping phase um if it's really short happy days because you your body can tolerate that that's what it's designed for but then it's been now 12 weeks of low sleep lots of coffee which increases your alarm stage pushes your blood pressure up um you uh you're working really hard so you've got that mental stress as well and then over a prolonged period of time your body hasn't had a chance to recover and so then you then go on holidays. And, and what happens? Yeah, you get, you get sick. sick. <laughs> and you think that this is your body uh, being even more sick. We think I'm sick, so therefore my body is even worse than it was at work. But what's happened is that you've just delayed your immune system to turn on, even though your body was just as sick, probably more sick. What happens now in stage three is exhaustion phase or recovery right. phase. Right. And so your body, in order to gain growth, like get stronger from a workout, you know, you take a muscle to temporary fatigue when you're lifting weights. And what happens? Uh, your muscle gets exhausted, can't lift another weight. It then rests for 48 hours and it comes back stronger. Mm -hmm. So this exhaustion phase is actually really important. But what happens when you get sick? Your body, your brain, it's like as you turn off work, your brain finally dials down that internal stress that reason to cope and so now you don't have to cope anymore yep. and so all of your recovery mechanisms now increase and one of the best ways for your body to recuperate as quickly as possible is to lie flat on your back for a week so i'm going to make you incredibly sick wow. i'm going to I'm going to tackle all this bacterial, these viral infections. I'm going to recover your body. I'm going to try and replenish your nervous system. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do that as quickly as possible. And so I'm going to drive a lot of symptoms that help our body slow down yep. so that you do take some rest so because our body is speaking to us. Out of you. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. saying, hey, you've been going too fast for too long. You need to rest and recover. I'm going to make that happen now. I'm going to make it wow. hard for you to get up. Your body's actually on your side. Um, and we see this even at a day-to-day -day level, whereas if you get tired throughout the day, so you wake up in the morning, you've got some really important stuff on, you have some coffee that even puts even more alert and cope into your system. You're then pushing hard all day long. You're on your best behavior at work. Yep. You then get home and your brain switches off Yep. and you're not yet sick, but your brain is so exhausted that it, switches off at least the prefrontal cortex does yeah and so and you which is your control horrible and person so you become this person who hates their family all of a sudden yes. and you don't understand why irritable you know, shitty 
Exactly. Had so one that's of a, those last night. Did you? No, we all do. I think I, I, I've stepped out of a few of those myself. And so we have this <laughs> short-term experience of stress and then recovery, which is exercise, like short-term stress, recover, get stronger. Short-term stress of day-to-day, you know, but it's probably a bit longer than what our body would like. We get stressed. We have to recover. We have to recover with rest. Uh, but if we don't get that rest, then it'll express itself through shortness. We won't have that tolerance that we had at work um, because we don't have that as much cope on. We're exhausted. Yes. Wow. That's just really that's so pertinent to what I did last night. Got all very shitty. Had to go for a very long walk. Yep. And and because I'd had a hard, stressful day, and this is exactly what happened. You know, had a bit of a meltdown, and then came home and got my shit together. But um, <laughs> you know, she yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> And, and I the, know to go for a walk. <laughs> exa- exactly. And, and one of the biggest, um, probably just to expand this to one final timeline, is that you, you do this for 10 years yeah. and your body says, I need you to stop completely. And that's yeah. a heart attack. Yeah. So it's like you've been coping for long enough. Your blood pressure has been high enough for long enough. Your cholesterol has been high enough for long enough. So much so it's created damage because there's yeah. been no recovery. So now I'm going to stop you for six months. Yep. Because it's been so long since we stopped last time. And so the, the key part of this stress piece is you can experience any stress, but it's about the recovery that is most important. If you recover appropriately, you can you get stronger and then you'll repeat that stress again. And this is where the resilience comes in is because if you see stress as a positive, even stress at work, and you have the, like a really tough day at work, and you go, whoa. I've learned how my body responds in stress. I'm going to learn. I'm, I now know how to deal with that situation better. Yeah. That resilience mindset right there, that allows you to actually lean into those lessons, recover and actually get a lesson for the next time as well. But if you've got a mindset that this stress is killing me, then you don't fully recover and you and your mind will actually create more stress on top the next time you experience the same thing as well. Wow. And so this is where that resilience piece and that mindset is not just physical, is like how much can you tolerate, how much can you cope physically before your body cuts it, but also um, how much, you know, how are you shaping your thoughts around this stressful experience as well? Wow. So and and just having a better mindset and more presence and more awareness and more mindfulness essentially will actually improve your immune system because you don't go into the same level of stress because you've got a mindset that is able to yeah exactly you can see things coming sort of thing and and try to try to head it off at the past sort of thing before the because we you know we all you know i think for years and years i you know heard people say oh stress you know stress is bad for you you're going to have a heart attack if you keep going at that rate that type of you know talk that you hear but you don't understand really the mechanisms that are at play in this game and what what's actually happening um and the the situation with our lives at presently you know what we've got you know COVID in the world which has caused like as as a society this huge amount of stress and uncertainty and all of these sorts of things so now is a particularly important time to to work on these tools and to be able to you know build our resilience and one of the things like I wanted to mention there was that if you are uh, like us you know hard charging type a personality's got a lot of stress hormones anyway Mm. um you have, you know, when I was younger, it's especially it was like, you know, just toughen up, just yeah. go harder and, you know, like just deal with it. And, you know, if you're tired, work bloody harder, you know, instead of going the opposite. And that works for a certain amount of time until it doesn't. And then you burn out. And, you know, so, so let's look at now um, how different health types, you know, because Dr. Cam, as everyone knows, hopefully who listens to the podcast, is uh, the CEO of PH360. Um, this is a genetic program that we look at the epigenetics and how your environment is affecting your, your life and your health. So let's look at like how do and why do different people react differently to the same stressor? You know, why can somebody have something horrible happen to them and get up the next day and carry on and the other person's down for the count? You know, what, where yeah. is this personalization coming in? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so what's so fascinating about how we develop and how we grow as individuals from the womb, and we've discussed this on previous podcasts as well, is that we have certain stresses that 
will be more stressful for us than for other people. For example, you look at a sumo wrestler, right? A sumo wrestler, if they get pushed by a 60 kilogram, uh, you know, 15 year old boy, they're going to go, oh, well, that's, that's not a stress at all. In fact, it tickles a little bit, you know, versus then you look at him, that 15 year old boy push an infant. That's very, very different to the experience of stress. And so obviously that's a, a quite an extreme example, but I wanted yeah. to, to make the point, or even if another 60 kilo, 15 year old person, they push them, it creates a different type of stress. Yep. And so physically we are different. Mentally, we are also different as well. And behaviorally, um, we, genetics determine over 50% of our personality or at least 50% of our personality. Wow. And so how we respond to different things is built into our biology as well and into our genetics. And so what we see uh, is that different people will actually appear in these phases of stress differently as well. And so um, a person uh, like us, so we've got, we've got crusaders in the sensors in the PH360 uh, model. Yep. Essentially, the way, just for a quick background, um, how we develop in the womb uh, determines which organs and hormones are going to be dominant in our body. Mm -hmm. um, those then contribute to how our body shape and size actually develop. Yep. So um, we have some individuals that develop from the layer of the embryo that is more predominant in the nervous system. Yep. So the nervous system actually gets, gets more fuel. Gets more the musculoskeletal yep. system and the digestive organs, they get less fuel. And so we end up with a body that has less muscle, uh, less fat, less bone generally, a very fine, delicate structure um, and hormones that make them, and a nervous system that's very heightened and hormones that make them very heightened as well. Lots of noradrenaline, dopamine. And so when we look at, you know, a very lean, delicate individual, um, when we think about how they're going to tolerate stress, if they get left out in the jungle, um, we know that their ability to tolerate that stress is going to be lower because they have less reserves on their yep. body. Yep. They have not as much time before they starve because they're, their fat tissue and muscle tissue just isn't it's as nice. great as somebody with a much more substantial body. And so these things are, are being determined very early on in their life. And so when we, when we talk about stress for this individual, their nervous system is the thing that protects them from stress because they don't have big, strong muscles that are going to help them fight. They don't have a big reserve. They have a very heightened nervous system. And so they spend a lot of their time in stage one stress. When they go into stress, they immediately start thinking about the future and where is my certainty in the future coming from? So they're much more prone to be anxious in a stress because as soon as their environment gets disrupted, they, uh, they start processing neurally to escape. They have to think their way out of trouble. Yeah, but, um, yeah. And the things that stress them, sorry, so you say? Yeah, they can't fight their way out, so they have to think, use their brain. <laughs> they have to make a sweet uh, recovery station up in a tree somewhere where they're safe from predators and set some traps because they don't want to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like They need really need to be strategic about it. And so um, what we know is the types of things that stress this person is cold, firstly. If, if they're very, very cold, their body doesn't have the muscle or the fat tissue to stay warm. And that really drains their energy levels. Um, and so temperature is huge. So if you put this person in lots of air conditioning, um, it actually makes them stressed. This is why we have so many people in offices wow. stressed by sitting in air conditioning or why they're wearing three or four scarves because temperature yeah. is so important to be controlled, but they can't control it. They actually need external heat to control their temperature well. Um, we also know that their nervous system is more heightened because the way that they protect themselves is to be in stage one most of the time. Yeah. So they need to uh, essentially be on high alert. So any noise, people doing random things, and uh, like when I say random things, lots of people around them, people are a little bit unpredictable. So their brain is alert to unpredictableness. And so unpredictability, I should say. And so we have cold, we have lots of noise, we have lots of people um, people touching them lots, all of these things is going to overload their nervous system, which right. is the, their, mm -hmm. the thing that they need to they stay need. safe. Yeah, and yeah. this creates an enormous amount of stress. As a result, this person is going to need to spend more time in the warm by themselves. Um, and 
this is because that allows them to dial their senses down and come out of stage one because wow. any noise, any cold is like an alert to their body saying this environment's not safe. Um, and when it comes to how they can manage stress, their mind is very, very important. If they can calm their mind and also have very, very clear uh dot points on what they're trying to achieve and very clear outcomes and guidelines that brings a whole lot of peace to their brain because if they're working with known rules i have my rules and if i apply this rule then my future is now certain and i don't have to worry about the future anymore because i'm following the rules and so wow. everything for their body is very neural it's like how do i create certainty how do i reduce the amount of mental alertness that i have and you need to reduce the amount of mental stimulation. So this will often come along with long, slender bodies with less muscle tissue, less fat tissue. Um, and <clears throat> in order for them to feel best, they need to have a very clear mind, a calm mind with a very calm environment. And so you can see though, they would spend a lot of time in stage one constantly checking out the environment yeah um, and that itself can be very exhausting uh, and so if they're in an environment where they're constantly on like in a really crowded place or in a nightclub or at a festival where there's lots of people and lots of noise it will they'll be in cope just trying to you know uh, manage all of the nervous stimulation and they'll become exhausted quite quickly because their physical resilience is not as great they get drained very easily because the nervous system gets tired very easily Whereas that's very different for other people, but I'll, yeah. I'll let you. Let yeah, you so you. so so that's for the, the slender, slight built, not much muscle person. Let's go to the opposite end of the scale and look yep. at someone like a guardian or a connector, yep. uh, who has a lot of muscle mass, a lot mm -hmm. more predisposition to having more adipose tissue and so on, um, and they've developed in the womb with a lot of uh, energy going into the digestive system. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah. Can you explain then the opposite end of the wheel? So what are these people going to, when is it going to be stressful for them and how do they cope with stresses? Yeah, perfect. So this individual, um, they have more hormones like prolactin and they are more likely to be insulin resistant. They have a slightly slower thyroid as well. We know subclinical hypothyroidism is, is very common for this, these individuals. These are bodies which are much more like the sumo wrestler. They are bigger, stronger, the most amount of muscle, the most amount of fat tissue they can accumulate it. They don't have to. Um, they have the strongest bone structure. And essentially all of these hormones set up and these metabolic environments sets up for conservation of energy and to protect other people. Prolactin is actually a very protective hormone. It's like I need to protect other people. Yep. And they respond very well to connection. And so when you've got a body... So the first body that we spoke about is actually quite selfish. I need to look after myself first Yep. Uh, versus this body, the way that it's built psychologically and behaviorally due to the hormones that it has and the genes that are playing out, they will be very protective and very nurturing of the people around them. Why are they able to do that? It's because they have this capacity. They have prolactin and insulin and growth hormone and IGF-1. All of these hormones actually help you become bigger for yep. any given circumstance if this person has more fuel, they will put on more weight as a result of that same amount of fuel. They will conserve better. They will add mass better. And so when you've got this really strong body, very substantial body, you are able to protect others and not be at risk of, of draining your own energy levels because you have so much more. And so what happens here is when this person goes into stress, it's when other people look like they're in stress, the people that they care about very yep. closely. Yep. If those people are in stress, their nurturing protective hormones fire up and go, Oh, and they go into a worry state yep. and then they start worrying about everybody else. Wow. Um, and so, but what's really interesting about this evolutionarily, this body, when the community experienced stress, their body would go into conservation. Because if everybody was experiencing stress, it means the food supply was about to run short or we're about to go to war or we're about to move camp and we're not certain about our food supply. So the way that I'm going to manage this is I'm going to gain as much weight as possible so that when the famine does come, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be able to support everyone and not have to eat. So it becomes this incredible famine protection. And so what we see when this person goes into stress, um, they, what happens the is... 
they, they conserve energy. They actually go into exhaustion phase. They rest and recover more. They eat more food, which puts them into rest and recovery. They do less exercise wow. because if they use energy when they're stressed, they think, oh, but what is everybody else going to have? And so their body, instead of going into hyper alertness and hyper activity and use all of your energy to think this through, this body actually goes into laziness, into cravings of food. And often the stresses that are created, it's not the temperature. This person's very well insulated. It's not the nervous system because this body can really tolerate a lot of physical stress, stress and strain yeah. and mental strain for that matter. Um, it is uh, disconnection from the family. Yep. Uh, if they feel Problems. disconnected from the people that they're close, if they see stress in their family, they will feel um, they'll feel like the community is threatened and that will create stress for them. If they're eating uh, very high sugar foods, in fact, it represents a stress because oh, well, if my blood sugars are high, then I must be stressed and therefore I need to conserve more. And so the body is able. So that actually creates a stress as well. Um, doing very, very high intensity exercise in the morning can be a stress for them yeah. because this is when prolactin levels are highest, when nurturing is going to be most well uh, executed by this person, I guess. You wake up in the morning and you nurture the people around you. Yep. If you're out there burning all of this very high intensity energy, it actually sends the stress levels, the cortisol levels higher, which is a coping hormone in that yep. stage two. And then this person, um, they will actually experience a high level of cortisol for the next few hours, which then makes them insulin resistant and helps them store weight. It's like wow. if I'm spending all my energy and running around in the morning, then there must be something wrong with my family because my I'm not family. looking after them. And so, so they put on weight when they do high intensity. And it's it's so fascinating. We'll know this. We have people all of the time who do 12 weeks of a boot camp first thing in the morning, <laughs> eat exactly what they're told, and they don't lose weight or they gain a little bit of weight. Yep. Um, and so this person gets stressed from that social disconnection, first and foremost. Yep. And then they can actually live fasted quite well. You know, uh, they're, they're very, very good at it. Um, but when they do get stressed, instead of going into stage one and more alertness, they don't have to be alert because they've got resilience. Yeah. They go into late stage two, they go into cope, um, but they also crave and they use less energy and they conserve. And so wow. that late stage two and stage three is where they enter into the stress cycle. It's um, they don't go through this big worry of the future. They, they more go into reflecting on the past and, and feeling down and their energy levels come down as well, which is the recovery state. So, and this is why they're able to gain and grow because in recovery, you grow and you gain. In stress, you spend and you wither. But uh, these guys grow and gain in stress. This, and that's because they enter the stress uh, stages at a different place. And they, so th th that's why for the, the slighter build person actually will lose weight when they're under stress. And, and bone. And osteoporosis um, is oh, usually. So you have a, a, yep. Exactly. Yes. And the heavier person will actually put on weight when they're under stress because the, the same stress hormones, but they come in in different stages and for different reasons in that person's life. And so the person who's of a heavier build and a heavier uh, bone structure, and they are going to be craving more of those bad foods when they're in a stressed out state. So they'll be uh, searching out for the, you know, the deep fried, the, the, because from an evolutionary perspective, that's what's happening, isn't it? They, they, we, we, we are driven to find those high caloric, high GI foods, which were very scarce back in the day. And unfortunately they're not so scarce now. That's and so right. that becomes a real problem for this group of people. Yes. Um, and then let's look at the third one, uh, the mesomorphs. Yes. Which, you know, I sort of, I'm a little bit of mesomorph, a little bit ectomorph, um, but the more muscular, you know, high intensity people who do well under that, what's happening in their bodies? Yeah, cool. So just to give a bit of a summary right now, essentially what we've got is different bodies in stress will go towards their safe zone. Right. So uh, those, those leaner, more delicate bodies will go within themselves. They'll try and be alone so that they can create certainty because certainty in their future creates safety for them and warmth as well um, versus, and, and so they will crave to provide warmth. They'll go for warm foods and for high sugar foods that supply their nervous system versus the guardian will go towards safety in the heavier that I am, 
the safer my community is yeah. because I'll be able to protect them for longer. And so if I go for these low energy, like if I don't do much exercise and if I eat lots of food, uh, the brain will actually motivate them to do less exercise and eat lots of food. Uh, that then creates weight. Weight creates stability. Stability creates safety for the community. Wow. And so when we go to the activator, um, the activator is that the pure, the body that's developed uh, predominantly with their musculoskeletal system, their adrenal glands um, are very, uh, and their sex organs are developed. And so they are higher in adrenaline and very sensitive to testosterone. And this makes them, when they are thinking about their best form, it's uh, uncertainty is high adrenaline, which makes them feel good. Um, also competition and winning variety also creates uncertainty as well. So this body is searching for variety, uncertainty, competition, a bit of risk Challenge. in order to feel normal, <laughs> which is very different to the other bodies as well. And so when the things that train create stress for them is the feeling of being trapped, um, the feeling of uh, being limited mm -hmm. because they like to break out. They like to be free. The they, like to, they like <laughs> to be in charge. Um, and they also they don't like to be told what to do. They don't like rules. Mm -hmm. So anytime that there's a rule in place, they'll be irritated by it. They'll look to break it out. And they, they have to, they have, because they have this big adrenal outflow, they get all of this energy just generate very, very quickly and it must come out. Yeah. And so the thing that creates stress for them is when that energy can't get out. Yeah. So yeah, I don't have someone that I can express with. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, or I can't move my body. Movement is actually the way that they can use a lot of this energy as well because their musculoskeletal system is all tied into their dominant development. And so when we're talking about um, this body in stress, it actually kind of likes a bit of stress because adrenaline is there and winning is kind of stressful as well. The thing that's going to create problems for them is that if they can't step into this space, they can't step into competition. They can't step into a bit of risk. They are told exactly what to do. Um, they also have more oxidative stress as well when they do things. They do things at high intensity. And so the body that gets developed out of this is shorter, more muscular. The typical, if you look at the top uh, 10, um, the top 10 CrossFitters in, on the planet, yep. uh, particularly in the guys, that's a really good depiction of a shorter, muscular uh, fiery short intensity into, yeah, yeah. exactly that that body is exactly what we're talking about right here love a bit of challenge love a bit of competition crossfit is made for this environment made for this body <laughs> yeah and so um what we need to do for this body is not stop it from experiencing stress because it actually will move towards that in order to get its adrenaline we actually need to make sure that it recovers appropriately right. and so what happens for this body is um like it'll be, it'll be walking around in their day and they'll say, oh, hey, we've got this new thing over here. Do you want to do that? They go, yes, I want to do that. And then they're at work and they go, oh, we've got these new projects. Oh, yes, I'll be part of that. Yes, I'll be yeah. part of that because they're adrenaline. Good at says, starting We things. can do this. I love yeah. this. Exactly. <laughs> and so they go high intensity into action, but because they've now got so many things stacked up and they're happy to drop one thing and then move straight to the next, um, that means that they never get a break from their adrenaline. Yeah. And so when that happens, they get more oxidative stress. Their joints start getting very sore. They get pent up and frustrated and they can just become quite exhausted. And so they enter into stage two uh, with their stress response. So they don't, they don't think about the, the stress. They don't think about worry and wor what's going to happen in the future. They don't go through that alarm phase. They go straight into fight. Like, I'm going to cope with this. I'm going to get into it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take action. And so immediately they go from doing nothing to doing everything very, very quickly, very high intensity change. And so when that happens, they need to expel their energy. Uh, and they the, the way that they can expel their energy is by verbalizing it and just talking it out. And they've got to have someone who uh, doesn't argue back. And I'm at fault with this many times with my, my partner. She's an, an activator <laughs> yeah. and she'll express. And I won't just sit there and listen like I should, uh, but rather I, um, I fight back. <clears throat> um, but this, uh, this essentially, these bodies generally, they need to expel energy. It can be verbal, but the best is physical, physical. exertion. If they yep. do really high intensity physical exercise, it will make them feel a whole lot better. But it only goes for 20 to 30 minutes. And then they have to stop 
Yeah. Then they have to stop completely and turn their adrenals off. And one way that you can do that is by lying on your back for 15 minutes, which actually turns off the, uh, the, the outflow of ACTH, which is your adrenocorticotropic hormone. It's the yes. hormone that comes from your brainstem yep. that says um, wow. the, the, you should release adrenaline. And so if you lie flat on your back, it allows this body to fully recover. So this body is going to naturally step into stress. It's actually a time base is to be in a bit of stress. But what they miss out on is recovery, spending time with fun people, calm people, um, spending time light, like just absolutely resting, stopping throughout the day and just allowing their body to, uh, to calm down. That's actually what this body needs. And so when we're talking about managing stress, the first thing we need to do for this body is not make sure that everyone's okay like, and make sure their social circle's okay. It's not make sure you've got all the rules and the processes and time alone like we have for the other couple of bodies. But for this body, we need to make sure that they exert their energy and then eat regularly. And yep. so uh, because what eating does is it puts them into stage three of recovery. And so if they're eating six meals per day, they're putting themselves into mini recovery sessions throughout the day because their body has to digest. And what happens to this body when they don't eat is they get very hangry. This is the hangriest body. And so we have this situation where they're acting frustrated or intolerant, and it's not because they're not a good person. It's because they haven't eaten. And it's if they eat, then all of a sudden they feel so much better and they deal with things in such a different way. The same thing goes after exercise. And so we have very, very different strategies. We've only spoken about three kind yep. of generals where there are six and then everybody is individual within that. But these give you the major major type yeah. of variations that you see based on how we develop and how our genes work. Just a quick question on the, on the activator, on the mesomorph there. Um, in regards to autophagy, because uh, yes. I think we briefly talked on this last week, but I did a whole session on autophagy uh, with uh, Dr. Sarah Nova. And, um, you know, intermittent fasting is a big thing. But how do we, how does, it, how does an activator do it then if they want to get, the benefits of autophagy, but they, they can't go without food for long periods of time. Well, they need six meals a day, which is the opposite of what you'd advise for someone on the endomorph side of the, the wheel. Yeah. Um, how, how are we getting, you know, uh, our autophagy going without causing the hangries and without? Yeah. Great question. So the first thing, and I guess you can apply this question to all of the groups, like the, the longest, leanest group are going to do the least well with lots of fasting because they've got a metabolism that just needs lots of fuel to stay up and about. And if you make them fast for too long, they actually get very, very tired, which is a little bit destructive. Yeah. Um, the, but a short fast, no problem, you know, like a, a meal or a day. Uh, but, but generally, it's still providing some carbohydrates is going to be important throughout their day. But they can get away with it, um, but it's just got to be for a shorter period of time. The more substantial body can deal with fasting for extended periods of time. And so their body is actually set up to benefit significantly from fasting. Yeah. The, 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 the third version that we've spoken about, the high intensity, high oxidative stress type individual, if they are going to be engaging in using lower food intake or fasting to stimulate uh, autophagy, then they want to be reducing their activity at the same time right. and they want to be practicing some really calming activities because they need to yeah. uh, make sure that they can dispel the energy or not yeah, dispel the energy through like a calm activity um, as opposed to uh, relying on the high intensity activity or not be stressed in the first place. So they need to get themselves into a very calm place environment with when less competition with less yep. things that they can say yes to, with, uh, with things that allow them to essentially not use their adrenaline energy to, to jump into things. They need to kind of create a, a fairly blank environment so that they don't get stimulated by things so that they don't have this requirement for extra energy. So that, that's essentially, we just need to consider the other components to it. Yeah, that's one, brilliant. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that really sort of puts it in, into a picture because you want the autophagy, you want the cleaning out of the broken proteins and the stuff that, you know, that, that makes us live longer when we do that on a regular basis and, you know, stopping mTOR and upregulating our AMPK and all of that sort of stuff. But yeah. It was still a bit of a, a mystery in my head, but how do I do that when I'm an activator or activator crusader? I'm, yeah. you know, on that cusp. So, 
for you know I get it that people on the Guardian side they can go without um, <laughs> but for for me you know that that that's always been so if I'm going to do a fast I need to make sure that I'm in a really non-stressed out situation and and calm which yeah doesn't happen very often <laughs> um let's move now just briefly we'll, we'll wrap it up shortly but um immunity in, in relation to all of this uh stress responses and and so on what's happening on a biochemistry level when when we're under the stress in you know right now with covid and you know all the other we've got winter coming down here in the southern hemisphere we don't want to get sick we want to make sure our immune system's on fire what can we do to improve our immune system in regards to these different body types yeah perfect so um and the most important thing here is that in order for our immune system to come on then we have to get into stage three and homeostasis like that they're the stages that we need to be in in order to stimulate our immune system and so what that means we have to put ourselves into recovery and so one of the most profound things that we can do straight away where all of most of our recovery happens from the day our mental recovery and our physical recovery is sleep we need to make sure that we get enough sleep um, there are different things that create sleep for different people, but seven to nine hours is recommended for everybody. Um, and it's very, very important that we get that sleep to start with. So uh, that's the first piece. The second piece then is every part of our environment is creating stress. Um, and so we need to make sure that we understand what's happening in the environment and how that's going to affect different people so that we can recover from that stress appropriately. And so if we were to go to the three groups once again, and I'll, I'll just preface this by saying that every single person's um, journey to an improved immune system is actually fully personalized and it needs to be tailored specifically to you. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, and that's, this is something, obviously, that we, that we work with you on, Lisa, with, with PA360. We've yep. got personalized immune protocols that actually allow you to do that and get all of this stuff that I'm about to address in principle, but for you specifically. So um, we have, if we were to talk about the go reverse order from last time, we talk about the activator and yep. the activator connectors first, a bit of a bit of crusader in there too, um, that top left of the circle. Um, essentially, uh, we're going to be looking at what are the things that... Um, remind like bring safety to this body movement will support that so if we do exercise high intensity exercise for this individual and then we have full recovery what we know from one bout of exercise you can get increased immunosurveillance that is your immune system is now more alert to wow. the environment around it and waiting for bacteria and virus and ready to pounce on them stronger we also know that if you're exercising regularly for eight to twelve weeks um, you will see uh, less chance of getting an infection, less chance or, or lower amounts of severity and lower amounts of time sick. So just being physically fitter has a profound effect on that. However, if you're a guardian or a diplomat and you're doing high intensity exercise in the morning, it actually adds to your stress load. Yeah. So, but if you do it in the afternoon, then that's going to really improve your immune function and your recovery throughout the night. Wow. So Exercise is a stress. It is a particularly potent way of enhancing your, uh, your immune system. And the same goes for sleep as well. Sleep, just one poor night's sleep can ruin 70% of your immune response. And so um, having enough sleep, really important. Making sure that you're moving, but moving in a way that's appropriate for your body at the right time, very yeah. important. And it's even more important for the activators uh, because their, their body is, is so requiring the release of that pent up stress. Um, then when we start talking about, if we start talking about guardians, then just to talk about a couple of different, uh, different, different sort of topics, the guardians and the diplomats or even the guardians specifically, the they need a really yep. connected social environment. And if they're experiencing a lot of stress socially, like they're isolated from their family, mm -hmm. they're disconnected from the people that they really believe are very close. Or if there's a lot of, infighting and arguments and all that sort of stuff in the family home while they're in lockdown, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that social stress is going to create a whole lot of stress for this individual, put them into cope and then down regulate their immune system. And you'll know this as well, is that if you're in a, you know, stressful work relationship or social relationship, 
uh, you don't feel at your best and your immune system is actually being decreased this time, but it's even more for the guardians and the connectors. Gee. Then we have, you know, the, the sensors and the crusaders. Um, they're very neural in the way that they stress. And the so lighter body type. Yeah, exactly. The lighter body the types are more delicate. And so yep. um, some movement is going to be great, but ultimately sleep is going to be important. Social is not going to be as important for this individual. Um, what's going to be really important is that they can actually calm their nervous system to bring them out of stage one stress. If they're doing meditation regularly, if they're going for slow jogs, uh, either of an evening or of a morning, or they're doing stretches and yoga, that actually calms the nervous system very well, which then takes them out of stress one, stage one and stage two, which allows their immune system to come back on. And so we have these different priorities. We've got you know, movement for the, the more mesomorphic bodies. We've got um, uh, social connectedness. Um, movement's also going to be very important up here too, as is food. And then we have the, the neural calmness and environmental calmness of warmth is going to be very important. But then we get into food. Food, you know, has all of these incredible little compounds that specifically drive your immune system to pick up or push down or uh, to, to be able to, um, you know, mount, like I said, you need enough protein to build your immune system. Generally, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. need you need your you need the right fats to control inflammation. Yep. You need um, the antioxidants to help reduce some of the damage that's going on when we're finding all of these bugs from the oxidative stress. And so, activators are going to need lots and lots of antioxidants for that reason because they experience more oxidative stress. Guardians are going to be better served to do some fasting, um, and the, the the fasting will really support them in bringing their blood sugar levels down, uh, helping them go into recovery, really supporting their digestive system, uh, controlling their uh, blood pressure in many cases as well, versus, and so uh, versus the, the sensors and crusaders are going to actually need a bit of carbohydrate. Yep. Uh, they're going, because the carbohydrates provide mental calm for them because if they don't have carbohydrates, their brain can go into a stress state to provide fuel, breaking down protein, turning into carbohydrates with lots of cortisol. It's and amazing. so- <clears throat> The compounds that you need specifically are, are individual, but we have these general principles that govern what different people need. And this is why if you, you, know, you say, yeah, I'm going to improve my immune system through this generic program right here, there's a very good chance it's not going to be appropriate for you. And so you really need to understand what your body needs so that you can get the best benefit. And most people will benefit from low calorie intake for a few days at least. Um, you know, Activators, they do five days of, of no protein, no fats, no um, fats. versus guardians will actually do very well on broth only fluids only you know non-caloric fluids only for 10 days whereas the diplomat will need you know 10 days of, of just fruits and vegetables but a very little protein very little fats as well so there's a um, different protocol for different individuals but the lower calorie really helps to reset uh, the immune system in many ways and there's been some lovely research by professor longo uh, yes. on that stuff around fasting and how it stimulates stem cell production of your immune cells. So if, if you're taking care of the whole body, you're understanding, you know, what kind of environment do you need to be in, what kind of movement is going to be appropriate, what kind of social environment is essential, um, then you put the right types of foods in as well. You're going to see a whole system-wide increase in your immune system. And the, the studies that we ran Last year, we looked at very detailed immune markers and we saw significant change applying the protocols that are found in PA360. Uh, we saw significant change in the immune aggressivity and readiness in 10 days. So you can really change these markers very, very quickly. And really the only thing that we have um, is a strong immune system. That's, that's the thing. That's what vaccines lean on as well. It yes. leans on your ability, ability to amount an response. immune response. Yeah, and this is yep. why vaccines aren't effective aren't as effective in some individuals with so suppressed good. immunity yep. yep so we we definitely we we need a strong immune system irrespective of what path you take with this yes absolutely and that's just so so important right now and to understand the nuance between the different types of detoxes and the different types of ways of dealing uh with the different body types is just so so crucial and autophagy and cleaning out and it's it's like it's like taking out the garbage regularly you know, and if, you know, I can put in, you know, all of my antioxidants and all my good vitamins and all my good nutrients, but if I'm not taking the garbage out on a regular basis um, and doing that appropriately for my body type, 
um, then you know you're going to have suboptimal performance and suboptimal immune system. And yes. so stress, resilience, immunity, huge pieces of this giant puzzle that we're all trying to put together. And we're very complex. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy. It's not easy. But giving this framework to the whole thing with the different body types, I've never seen this in any other system that, that I've learned and, and or researched or read about where it's actually personalized, you know, um, and that's why I think it's so powerful because, you know, like you can read a book on fasting and go, well, I'm going to do that, but you need to know how to do it best for your body. And that's, you know, and how to detox for your body and how to, to how to do all this. Dr. Cam, you've been brilliant today, again, as usual, um, a mine of information and just brilliance. So thank you very much for um, jumping on again. I really appreciate your time and the work that you do. Um, and if anybody wants help with understanding what health type you have, if understanding this specifically to you, then that's what we do. Please reach out to us um, or have all the links in the show notes but just head on over to lisatarmody.com hit the work with us button you'll see our peak epigenetics program and this is the sort of people that we're working with dr cam is the, the ceo of ph360 in australia and he's one of our great teachers um, and this program is really really beneficial for people who are wanting to optimize their genes not just for stress and immunity and resilience but also an optimal performance in every area of your life. So thanks very much, Dr. Cam. Anything to add today before we hop off? Yeah, I will say one thing, and that is um, <clears throat> your body is always on your side. <clears throat> so, and the, the thing that we think is that our body's fighting us or not cooperating with us or uh, essentially our response to stress, whatever we think in our brain doesn't really matter. What, what's going on in our body <clears throat> and the information that we take from that is very, very important. So when your body is genuinely tired it's saying hey i don't have quite as much energy as what this activity requires um, i need rest it's actually speaking to you and saying i need rest not saying oh my body sucks i've got to get better at uh, not stronger. being tired yeah <laughs> and i've just got to have more coffee your body is not deficient in caffeine it's it's actually deficient in the appropriate recovery for it and the biggest realization that i had is that your body is always trying to do the best yes. for you and if you start listening, you'll find that that stress recovery cycle is far easier to manage. And we didn't even get into resilience, which I'd love to talk about another time. Next that is, time. Next yeah, episode. how when you're in that state of that balance between stress and recovery, you are able to mount an attack on anything that you want from a very, very strong place. And so the um, know that your body is always, always on your side. Start listening to it more. Um, because you'll start getting keys into when you need rest, when you yeah. can push. Um, there's a bunch of things that you can do around that, but I, I just want to really get you to start listening a lot more because that's where this can this can all start. And I think, you know, especially for some of the audience who are athletes and hard chargers and people that, you know, go, 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 it's all very well and good, but just remember you still made of flesh and blood and uh, you need to respect the biology. And there are times when we can push outside the, the norms and do crazy things and amazing things. But then afterwards you need to, to go into that re recovery phase and you're not bulletproof like you think you are. Um, and, there was one a good analogy, you know, your body will give you a little tap on the head saying, hey, I need a rest or I need something from you. And if you ignore it, then it will be a real hit on the on the shoulder. Hey, I need a rest. And next time it will be a Mack truck that comes and flattens yeah. you. you know, yeah. <laughs> And it will be something major. And we don't want that. So listen to the little taps <laughs> yes. before you have to get a Mack truck to put you on your back. <laughs> Absolutely. Just being a, a little bit fatigued after two hours of work is a, a little whisper in your ear. It's yeah. very, very good to listen at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to do that just now. Go go out for a walk in nature for, for 10 minutes and Beautiful. digest this wonderful information that you've given us today. So thank you, Dr. Kim. No, really thanks, appreciate Richard. it. I